OK, welcome. So what I want to do is show you how to graph y equals negative 3 tangent of pi x. So what I'm going to do for graphing the tangent, remember, we just got to find our important points. So for tangent, remember, the first thing we're going to look at is our period. Now remember, on the tangent graph, our period is going to be pi divided by b. So I've looked at my b, which is going to be my coefficient of my x. And therefore, I notice that the coefficient of my x is going to be pi. So therefore, I have pi divided by pi, which equals 1. Now, the next thing I'm going to want to do is evaluate for the x scale. So to find the x scale, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to take my period and divide it by 2. Therefore, my x scale is going to be 1 half. That means the distance between all my critical points of my tangent graph are going to be 1 half away from each other. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to find our initial period. Now, the initial period of the parent graph of tangent starts at pi halves, or negative pi halves, and ends at pi halves. And I want to see, is there any, going to be change, any distance in change of period or um, phase shift that's going to be going on? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the start um, is when my function equals x equals negative pi halves. And the end is going to be where my function x equals pi halves. However, what we notice now is that my function is now not x like the parent graph. It's now pi x. So I'm going to set pi x, pi x equal to negative pi halves. And I'm going to set my end, pi x, equal to positive pi halves. Now I'm going to solve for x. So to solve for x, I divide by pi on both sides. And I get x equals negative 1 half. And here I divide by pi. And I get x equals 1 half. So now it's going to come into the graphing part. And I notice that my start is going to be negative 1 half, and my end is going to be at 1 half. So I'm going to graph a nice x-axis. And I'll say, all right, here is going to be negative 1 half. My next critical point, which is my x scale, would be negative 1 half plus 1 half, which would be 0. Then I have my next critical point, which is at positive 1 half. And then I can just keep on creating this pattern to find all of my critical points which this one would be 3 halves. I can now work in the negative direction, negative 1 and negative 3 halves and negative 2. Now, it's important for you to understand the start and the end of a tangent graph is where you're going to have your vertical asymptotes. So you can just see I'm just going to kind of keep on skipping a point in the middle between my two asymptotes for my critical point, those are going to be your x-intercepts. So I'm just going to kind of make a nice little dot here for my x-intercepts. All right, so before I start graphing, there's a couple things I want to mention to you. First thing is we have a multiplication of 3. And it's actually a multiplier by negative 3. And we need to understand what is that 3 really going to be doing to our graph. Well, one way we can de determine what that graph is going to do is we can find the value. We could actually split this up. And rather than taking your period divided by 2, we could take our period divided by 4, find out what these two points are, plug them into our function, and then get the output value. However, I really just want to kind of focus in on what the graph is going to look like as a sketch rather than trying to get some exact values. So what I like to do is I know that multiplying it by 3, since the absolute value of 3 is greater than 1, I know that it's going to horizontally compress my graph. Therefore, I'm going to have a rather skinny graph. So the parent function of tangent looks like this. All right? It falls down to the left and rises to the right. But we notice that um, a of my graph is negative. And with the a of neg when it's negative, that tells you that you're not going to reflect your graph over the x-axis. So I'm now going to take this graph and I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis. And it's sort of also important now, ladies and gentlemen, for us to remember that these graphs are cyclical. We're going to keep on repeating them infinitely in the positive and negative direction. So I'm just going to keep on sketching these, making them nice and skinny. And I can now kind of eliminate my original parent graph, looking up there. And there you have it. I have y equals negative 3 tan of pi x. Thanks. See, does that make sense now?